And if we stop one wheel, the other wheel won't budge. Let's put this bar on a pivot so that it can swing in either direction. Now, the bar can still turn both wheels at the same speed. And because it pivots, it lets one wheel turn even when the other is stopped. But if turned too far, the bar will swing around until it won't drive the spokes that turn either wheel. We need another crossbar and more spokes to carry on the job. When we stop one wheel, the crossbars will continue to push the spokes of the free wheel around. As long as both wheels are free to turn, the bars do not swing on their pivot and the wheels move at the same speed. Now we have the working principles of a differential. To adapt the model for use in an automobile, we will have to make a few changes. In order to reduce the jerky action caused by wide spaces between the spokes, we will put in more spokes. Further filling in the spaces between the spokes gives steadier, more continuous action. And changing the shape gives firm, constant contact. Now we can make the gears thicker and stronger, and we have differential gears. The edges are cut so that they will fit together more smoothly and silently. And another gear is added to share the work of driving the axles. The principle is the same. In order to turn the support and drive the wheels, we can fasten a large gear here, connected by a smaller gear to a source of power. Notice that the power is connected to the differential at the center line. We can make our model more compact by moving the gears closer together. When we put our differential in an automobile, we have to leave room for the drive shaft, which carries the power from the engine.